pops in and Chrono the Spectre gets killed, buy back Haunt. Like, that's always a late game option for Team Empire. We're very far from, but uh, this is a very good time to actually introduce the players of both teams. Team Empire on the Radiant side, Silent playing to carry Spectre, always want to fly on Ancient Apparition. Vanscore on the Venge, he's got a tough job this game. He, he's got to protect his allies. Mag is going to be on the Batrider, and last but not least, Resolution on Brewmaster. And with that being said, we can also introduce Team Liquid on the Dire side. We have Koikfa handling your Weaver. Way2 will be playing the Sand King. Pegasus, or Demon, will be in the off lane as the Faceless Void. TC, your Razor, and that does leave Bulba on the Marana. And Lumi, I gotta say, Bulba carried them here. In, in the in the wild card tournament, they were getting pushed mid by MVP. He hits that arrow, then the hero gets lassoed, dragged into the base. I think he turned that game for them, and so I'm looking to Bulba to have a big performance here, and he kind of needs to. Void is not going to be very active early on, neither is Razor. Even Weaver just wants to farm, and Sankey needs to get his blink, so it's mostly the Murana who's got to get them to that mid-game stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, All I eyes on Bulba, Bulba for me. I believe in Bulba. By the way, I just want to say I called that Spectre pick. Okay. <laughs> you want a cookie, Aldi? <laughs> yeah, I do. I want a cookie. Cookie All would right. be nice right now. I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, you were gonna get lunch, but you yeah. you said no. Well, we'll get lunch a little bit later on. All right, here we go. Teams are moving into the lanes. Bulba, Koikfa headed towards top. Uh, we do have the Sand King of Way 2 make his way into his own jungle. They really want to protect this camp right here if you're Liquid. You want to make sure your Sand King can stack that and already you see they're setting up in positions where they can break a potential level one smoke. It feels like Bulba and to a lesser extent, Way 2 have really do a lot in this early game because this Look at the three farmer this this game. They don't do anything. They just sit there and CS and CS. Oh, for Liquid? Yeah, for Liquid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think it's a big concern. If Bulba is not hitting arrows, if he goes around setting up kills, then I think they're okay. But I actually am favoring Empire a bit right now. Because the other thing is, they're not going to be able to stop the Spectre from farming with an offlane void, especially a dire offlane void. Maybe if he's left alone from level 1, he'll do okay, but you know they're going to support him until the point where the Spectre can win the lane. And they can also, I think this Trilane can kill a Void at early levels. You, you stun him, if he doesn't time walk out of the stun, you pop the Chilling Touch, Spectre dives him with Desolate and Dagger. Even after he time walks, unless he's up a cliff, you just run him down. Yeah. So, I think begins. this is a really good laning setup for Empire. I would say that dodging a Magic Missile would be pretty easy on time walk. But, uh, we'll, we'll see if, uh, Jimmy... Is going to be able to do that. Yeah, Demon has had a magnificent start to this event. By the way, I want to point out his item build as well. He starts with the Stout Shield. He does not complete a Poor man Shield. To me, this is the the better way to build your offlane Void. You get a set of Tangos, otherwise you don't have money for it, and then your passive gold gain lets you complete the Poor man Shield at the side shop. Some players actually start with the Poor man Shield, but I think it's a mistake. Well, you have to use a Curry to ferry something, but Vance is going to get caught right here. Burrow Shrike into an arrow. He's really caught out of position. The Link's going to come through. He has a Haste Rune. And he'll run it off, but uh, not the best usage of that haste rune. You don't have to actually ferry anything, because you can just get the last slipper from the side shop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to ferry it. Oh, you say you don't have to. Okay. If, you, if you PMS, then you have to ferry that tango, which right, is not right. good at all. Yeah, yeah, that's why I think yeah. the build is really nice. The downside to all this is they're leaving Sun alone at level 1, and he started... I'm really surprised they're doing this. He started Stout Shoot Coiling Blade. This is just a pure farming build. Yep. They should be securing his early farm and then they can uh, let him go, but Liquid already on the move. They're gonna head straight towards the bottom lane and put some pressure on the Spectre. Well, actually, he's already right now Faces Void doesn't have jump. He's but the, actually... back, the backup's coming. Yeah, They're he's coming baiting. with an arrow and a burrow strike from the jungle. Well, classic Jimmy. Like, this is this is where he's at. He's always in the trees. Oh, but the creeps are not, they're now dealing with the creep. Man, he's hitting hard. 69 damage. The chili touch is about to wear off here. It's about halfway done, and <laughs> he's just using all his tangles, and he's got it getting out of there. So it's going to be a trialing versus trialing on the bottom. That's a good trade. Yeah. I think they both, he forced the Spectre to use a lot of his regen as well. Try on try. Huh. It is a Spectre try lane. But it's also a Sand King Void Trilane. So I feel like both Trilanes are so bad that there's no clear winner. I mean, at, at least Spectre gives you AoE slow, right? That's so there, there's that. Void is just... I don't know. It comes down to the arrows. So I, I, I mean, as it usually does in Murana lanes. The problem is they don't have great setup for it. Burrow Strike is just such low range. You know, all things considered, I, I'm favoring Team Liquid's lane here. Koifa's gonna do fine against Mag. And then Razor's gonna do fine against Brewmaster mid. So it's really going to come down to the bottom lane, and then Pegasus, well, he's he's getting the EXP, yo. 
this bro is actually doing quite well considering the matchup. Yeah. It's the early levels, but he's already 11 and 3 to a 12 and 3 Razor. I think it was really actually thanks to Vanscore tanking a lot of uh, nukes on the mid lane. That's true. Yeah, and he just like ran by. Well, yeah, as you can see, Bruce had a pretty good TI thus far, and he's such a fun hero to watch for me. Like he's not. He's a hero that can do have huge or no impact, depending on how well you micro. Liquid are making a move though through the river, and we are gonna see the smoke. Way two and Bulba, they're packed up together, and they won't always want to fly. They spot him. They need an arrow, and the creeps are in the way. And now he begins Ooh. the pull, which is gonna reveal way two. He just didn't execute it right. They needed to thread an arrow from around the trees, but the creeps were. A bit. Oh, they're still committing they to it. Boots. They're they just going to run him down. This is such a long dive for them. Where's the backup? Arrow connects as well. Always want to fly. Needs help. I don't know if he gets out of this. No salve. One more right click. Man, they dove for ages. But backup's inbound. Way too. He can burrow down to the low ground here, and he's going to need to because they're on the move for him. What a player. Liquid Boba leaps down to the hill. Meanwhile, Sandstorm is. They can uh... stick around for a clap. They should stick around and clap him in a second. Well, cooldown in a couple seconds is a very long cooldown. The earlier that was actually always the same cooldown. There's a clap, jukes, no jukes. Well, they get they still get the first blood, but it is on a support ancient apparition and cost them a smoke, and they feed resolution a kill. So give Liquid a slight edge there, but only slight. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy if I'm way too getting that. Uh, the bigger blood. thing is that there's th this Weaver is just crushing the safe lane right now. 25 and four to the 13 and one of the bat. Oof. Mag went for a pull, almost a arrow in the face, but uh, gonna back it off for now. Empire, I mean, you, we, it's very clear what they want to do. They're gonna come in, come out in the mid game very strong, start ganking, start going for team fights, getting towers. But the fact that the laning stage has gone not exactly stellar for Empire is very big concern. That's gonna really delay your key items, such as Blink on Resolution, maybe the first key item on Spectre. Silent likes to play Vanguard on Spectre, and looks like they're gonna make it go on Pegasus. Pegasus forced to jump here. Oh, if they had a dagger, that's a kill, but there's no mana for it. Yeah, especially with that face boot. Yeah, Silent likes his Vanguard first, and with that Vanguard, he likes to fight quite a bit. I think Vanguard's really good this game as well. Because, like you said, they're so good in the mid game, and at the very least, something like a drums. I feel just trying to rush some sort of damage item would be a mistake. He, he sometimes even gets both. He gets like Vanguard and drums. I'm like. I don't know about that. As long as you're finding fights and getting kills, it's okay. But it does, it, it really, really pressures delays. your mid game. It really delays your Radiant, so. That's true. But we'll see exactly what he's going to go for this game. We haven't seen Silent Spectre for a long, long time. Liquid is crushing these 1v1s, though, now. You see the Razor with more levels, takes advantage of the Panda. Still, though, Panda, he was given that kill and already has 400 gold in the bank, so I think we'll, we'll see a reasonably timed Blink Dagger. The bigger concern for me is the. I don't. Honestly, is. Just the supports right now for, for both teams. You've got an ancient pressure with no boots. We're already five minutes in. The Venge has boots and nothing else. Only level three and I don't know, just nearly not getting much off the map. Yeah, always wanna fly is gonna tunnel through a pool should he time it properly. Looks like he will. He's getting a little bit of experience. You gotta keep in mind that Sanking also have to waste a bit of time in the jungle as he's doing right now to get a couple of stacks. And Batrider clearing a couple of stacks is gonna go back up top and steals this experience. A little bit of it. Yeah. Well, this is this is the thing. If it turns into a trade, Liquid are going to win in terms of farm because their supports just farm way quicker. There's more backup here though. There's a Marana near in the neighborhood and Demon. Oh, they're going on him. He's got a time walk. It's level three, but the cold feet come through and look at that chilly touch damage. Oh. He fails the time walk. Too short. Well, Demon needs to work on his vertical there. Could it quite clear the hill? Although I think he was going down anyway. More time in the gym, Demon. That's the thing with the bench done. If you're close to the void when you cast it, it is quite hard to destroy. Yeah, the cast time of uh, the jump is just way too long. But if you're running away when it's coming in, it's pretty easy to dodge it. Arrow, not gonna connect. Yep. Resolution, somehow doing quite okay in the mid lane. Mostly bottle chrome and using clap for CS. Well, has the Marana's early roaming been enough for no. you? I mean, it, it's gotten the first blood, which Radiant's is nice. Top tower but Marana is not a hero that you take to the mid game and be like, ah, we got a great crowd control stun or a, a great way to counter initiate she's she's make or break and right now it's it's not making it does the sand cave make up for it do you think oh, it mid does. lane they want to go on resolution here arrow's gonna come through he's got to dodge this one he will do so and makes his way out the thing oh though, actually it's always want to fly the thing though with, with so much fighting capability at empire you know empire is always looking for the fight so marana's got a ton of room to actually land those arrows and let's not forget about moonlight shadow 
If you could dodge a couple ganks, or, you know, maybe turn around a couple ganks with Moonlight Shadow, then the, the hero suddenly becomes worth it. And all, to answer your previous question, yeah, Sankey is one of those amazing comeback heroes during the mid game. You land a big epicenter, and that's that's all you really need. So I, I think the support duo, even though a little bit weak currently, they're going to be uh, having some strong impact in the mid game. Quake for really trying to pressure this ancient apparition out of the lane, but he can't quite do it. He's too low on mana, and already we see. I like the way Empire are moving these supports around. They're giving some extra levels to the ancient apparition. I imagine they'll do the same for the Venge soon. And they want this us blast online. Blink Dagger's coming quickly for Mag. 1500 gold as an offlane bat is really good for this stage of the game, and I'm liking how Empire's mid game is shaking up. Liquid are working towards a blink of their own on the Sand King, to be fair, but just got, you know the bat's going to be reliable, and the Sand King can be very hit or miss. Yeah, and the critical thing for Liquid is that they also have level 6 now on Pegasus. He's just hanging out. Meanwhile, Bat Rattler, uh, I thought he was dying. He's just uh, farming the neutral, like you said, and he uh, is going for a blink. Yeah, and one more rotation, I'll have it. The other thing is, how well does Liquid use Chrono? That's always worth a discussion when you're looking at the game. It really just sets up the epicenter, I guess. And maybe a static link? I think it's good with Razor if you do it right. Like, if he can walk up to them with his ult if they're on the boundaries of it, then I think it can be a very potent combo, but... Sometimes it feels underwhelming with those two. Well, let's not think of Chrono as a combo piece this game, but more so just as, like, a, a super cog. It sets up Arrow as well, that's worth mentioning. So I think true. it's a pretty good Chrono game. I mean... I think it's just good enough to stun half the enemy team. M maybe not even focus on them, just deal with the other ones. Oh, like Silent. This is going to be a tough one to get out of. He's got the dispersion here, and the Reign of Hell. Arrow! arrow. Oba whiffs the arrow, and now the Spectre's trying to make his way out. He still ends up going down, though, in spite of it. And now they rotate in more. It's actually four heroes bottom. Bang score could be the next one caught out. Oh my goodness, that was a... Uh... Unfortunate arrow, but it seems they'll get two regardless. Nicely done here by TC, picking up that kill. I like the TP, and now they're right there, and uh... Liquid are living a charmed life. Boba's denying the... Denying, denying the Aegis, missing arrows and Chrono Heroes, and they're still coming out on top of those engagements. They're still me. winning. Resolution Gaia's needs that blink, and he doesn't have it right now. And a little bit of chip damage at the tier 1. Attack. And obviously, getting the tier 1 bottom for Liquid is going to be big. If you're roaming Marana, and you could get into the enemy jungle, that's huge. And uh, moving that... Tier 1 allows you to move into the jungle. And how good has Boba been playing? Or sorry, not Boba. Uh, Jimmy. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. At bottom lane, I want to say he won it. You know, he's level 7, he's got his chrono. He's going to get uh -oh. his Midas. Resolution. He wanted the rune, but Koikfa was waiting for him. If he gets a couple more auto attacks off, in fact, it's one more. The evasion luck, not good enough. He gets the kill. That's a costly death. Brewmaster actually just bought the blink, so he at least picks that one up, but... Nonetheless, feeding the, the already very farmed Weaver is not what they want. Weaver's already farmed. Jimmy's got Midas. But he's going to hit level 11 very quickly. He's going to have that better Chronosphere already online. Empire, to me, is officially in trouble if they just farm. They're, all, they're on a clock. They've yeah. gone for a Vanguard Inspector, and they've, they're running a bunch of mid-game teamfight specialists. They need to be getting kills. They have everything they need aside from their cooldown and haunt, and... They should be going for it, but you look at the wards around the map right now, there's a fantastic ward that spots those lane rotations top lane. There's a good one towards the mid as well, and if Empire don't have great vision, these ganks are not going to be easy, Lumi. Well, Empire's got a smoke, and uh, I think that's going to be their avenue to pass these wards. They do see one hero on the mid lane, that's going to be TC. Getting a kill on him is going to be pretty big, because chances are you're going to knock down the tier 1 afterwards, but I think they are expecting it, because Batrider has been disappearing off the map for a long time now. And you they actually, just, they popped the smoke, but TC is showing some good map awareness here. Yeah, I mean, no bat for, on the map for a long time. Chances are he's got the blink already. Chances are he's looking for you. And Mag is kind of leading the charge, but the problem is if you go really deep into the enemy jungle like that and find TC, they're not going to kill him quickly enough before he pops his mech. And that's when his ally is going to come in. That's TC when is it's really not the one you want to jump right now. I mean, who do you want to jump? I guess the Weaver? I think Sand Cane's a really good target. Void is still quite squishy. He's got boots and a Midas, so... The thing is, like, no matter who you're trying to kill, it's gonna take a while. Because the burst damage isn't that high. And that's enough time for the other heroes to come in. So I feel like Empire has to do their ganks perfectly, or it's gonna turn right back against them. Just really good play by Liquid. As soon as, like you said, as soon as they know Radiant the Blink Dagger's out, they don't see the bat, they just back off. And they, they clump, they still farm, but they farm the jungle as four or five. So, basically, if Empire jumped that, 
they've got to execute pristinely or they're just going to end up getting counter initiated upon. Well, meanwhile, Liquid are on a move of their own. Will this one be spot out? Always want to fly. Oh, he's Stop about to bite him, it. Oh, oh, Way 2 is just going to no. walk in straight on top of him. He almost accepts the, the gank. Makes it easier for Liquid, in fact. And then they take a tower on top of it. Liquid aren't having to work very hard for these kills, I got to say. They're not. I mean, I think a lot of their smart play is not showing up on the scoreboard and takes a, like a finer detail, finer eye to see, but apart Dyer's from that, like Liquid is doing is very basic standard stuff, you know. I smoke gank here, I farm my carries. What they do have is a very solid draft, and but the first 10 minutes of that solid draft as Batrider gets a key pick off on Sanking. I mean, picking up the Sanking is nice. But at the end of the day, he's just a support. And, there, and he's already got his blink. Yeah. Level 7 with his blink. And there's double Midas out for Liquid. So it's it's a good kill. But they need they need to keep on getting kills. They can't just sit on that and say, okay, we slowed him down now. We can relax. And well, you look at Koikfa's item progression, already up to 1,200 gold. He's pretty much got the recipe. Just needs the ultimate orb for the Lincoln Sphere. And Demon's completed his treads. Yeah, not only get kills, you got to start getting towers, which for their team, they're not really good at d doing that Radiance either. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Empire man, this is not looking good. I like their draft a lot. I think the idea is very sound. It's just, I think one issue was that they left the Spectre alone bottom lane too much. Didn't secure his farm first, so Demon got a lot more than he should have. Especially as a dire off lane void. And then the other thing is, just the rotations didn't really do much to slow down Liquid. They didn't stop the Weaver from farming, they were losing their 1v1 matchup. And they didn't slow down the Sand King at all. He had a pretty fast and uncontested blink, so... But I like the Empire's draft in concept, but it's this is obviously not how the draft's supposed to go. Yeah, and, They're and supposed to be ahead, finding pickoffs with last range, have Rich Nice Blast, and just controlling the game. Yeah, at this point, these, these heroes are Liquid are so tanky that the kills are just not gonna come. At least uh, at a rate that will satisfy Team Empire's thirst, because... Uh, Razor's just picked up a point booster, 1200, 1300 health with the, with the mech on top. Koifa, perhaps the squishiest of the hero if you can even find him, but Sakuchi and Time Lapse will protect him. And obviously, face, face this void with that RNGG backtrack that he's uh, leveling up right now. 1000 HP, a lot of survivability. There's an ancient person on bottom lane, Spectre Haunt's available, but it's just kind of casually thrown out, and then they run top. It will cool down in about 30 attack. seconds or so, but uh, will it be up in time for this next go? That's going to be the question. Resolution and Vanks score moving in. The other thing Liquid's doing well is they're pushing in the lanes to the point where if Empire's not farming the lane, then Liquid know they're off doing some, some sort of gank. Like this top. Like top. Yeah. Well, they know the gank's coming. Let's see if they're going to react appropriately to it. Koifa, or sorry, Mag's going to cut through the trees and should see Mirana as a result. No. Getting him's not good enough. I mean, it's like the Sand King gank earlier. It's, if they get the Marana and the Sand King or something, I think that's okay. But just getting one support for all this time, definitely not worth it. Yeah, they are wasting way too much time, uh, and nothing is really happening. Teleportation coming into the bottom lane. Maybe way too is going to be the prize here. Do they have detection? That's also the other question. They don't. He's already on the move as well. He's retreating out. It feels like Empire is doing a lot of movements, but movements without purpose. I feel like they're just smoking up, hoping to run into somebody, get a quick kill, and go back. But Liquid's not running into anybody. Here comes the Mag. And he's gonna get Burrow Drag. Mag's down to about half HG. The Clap's gonna come through. The Haunt's gonna be there as well. A big explosion of fire is gonna come through. Wait, though, he's dropping pretty fast. Looks like there's TC being cycled up in the air. Wait, gonna just walk out of there. TC, he's gonna walk Chrono. away as well. Chrono's gonna hit. They're now gonna go Silent Pegasus, though. He actually doesn't do any damage. So he has to back up. But Epicenter will do a ton of damage. The Burrow Strike's gonna come through around Resolution. They're very tanky as well. Resolution, he has a crit. He's gonna get one kill. Arrow's gonna not gonna hit. Resolution trying to actually get away. But a great jump from Pegasus. Pegasus cuts off his retreat, a two for one exchange. Team Liquid comes ahead there as well. Yeah, while, while that was going on, they also lost their Vengeful Spirit, who got picked off solo by the Weaver Act. And they might lose more. Koifa's coming in right now. No, mo no more mana. Always want to fly. Ooh, Radiant's he's not diving in for it. Very, very surprising. He, he definitely could have gone for that, yeah. but maybe didn't realize it. That had respawned, but he could have killed him and gotten out before he was in range for a lasso. All right, well, these these kinds of trades are still fine for Liquid, end of the day, and, and in fact, quite good for them. They have the double Midas, their cores are not dying, and they continue to accelerate their farm. Demon, now sitting on 1,200 gold, your Weaver. Lincoln, here, I believe, now being delivered as we see the Courier inbound. That is a big problem for Empire, actually, Lumi. They have only single target lockdown, exclusively. Lasso, Bat, 
Toss, or uh, Panda's Boulder Toss, and Avenged Stun and Swap. So, I want to say the Sweeper is basically immortal with Lincolns. Yes. Until they get a Force on Bat, at which point you can blink Force to break the Lincolns, then lasso them. But then they gotta burst them down during that time, and they don't have the burst, so he's basically God. Yes, he is, he is God. Some are right. calling them the Q-God now, so perhaps it's fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose. Uh, right now, Empire down 7,500 gold, and this lineup can't play from behind. We're seeing right now. They they need to rely on their spell damage early on to get a couple of snappy kills, and they rely on the spec to carry them through. But the kills are not to be had. They will get a radiance at some point on Silent. He's up to 3k gold. It doesn't seem like Liquid are in any hurry to end this game. I think that will give Empire a second wind, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. I feel like for Liquid, they may lose a few heroes here and there to Haunt, but they can just play around the Haunt cooldown. And it's not going to help them deal with the split push. The Weaver can still split push freely. Void can as well. And if you want to commit to killing them, you've got to send four or five, and then the other just pushes the other side of the map. As long as Liquid don't clump too much, I think they can just keep on farming. Arrow's going to fly through. Whew. Boba. Almost finding Mag. Top tower is under attack. But, uh, no harm, no foul. It was a good effort, but unfortunately fall short. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Way 2's on the move, he jumps in, initiates upon Silent. Is there follow-up for this? The Spectre just not tanking up what a Chrono crap. to keep him in position. What a well done by Demon. Nowhere to go. You know, I'm gonna say that Liquid is playing very, very smart Dota. Like, so smart Dota. Because they don't, they don't give any room for Empire to ever make a comeback. Those smoke gang dodges, that's just solid map awareness. They don't take a fight where they don't think they can win. This is like s solid stuff. Don't make mistakes. They're just dismantling Empire, honestly. Like, it hasn't felt like Empire's had a chance in this game since... I don't know. About this stage, the 8 to 9 minute mark. And we're now approaching the 20 minute mark. Right. And Liquid has the greedier late game lineup, for sure. So... Uh, it's it's not looking good, Lumi. I, I think the most important thing for me, Dyer's and I guess for like Hotbit or any a Team Liquid fan out there, is moving forward. How does Team Liquid deal by playing behind? Dyer's deal with playing behind? Because when they are ahead, they know how to play, and that that goes back to like for example, newbie again yesterday. That that was what a 70 minute game where they were playing ahead the whole time, and they almost still lost that one. Right? It was really close. I, I looked I looked to their performance against MVP Phoenix. That was one of the most high pressure situations you'll ever be in. With sure losing a game here could knock you out of the event, but you don't know it at the time, at least not at this point. These are not super high pressure. They were down in that game one, and you lose game one and you're like, geez, we're one loss away from getting knocked out of TI and MVP Phoenix was pushing high ground, and they turned it around, were very patient with when they took their fights, waited for the moment, right moment, the arrow, the lasso, so I look to that and say, I think this Liquid does have what it takes. So, championship mentality, they have it, is that what you're saying? That's a very strong phrase, I think they have a good mentality, especially okay. compared to Liquid in, in the past. Well, here comes the initiation right now, they're gonna find Koifa, well, Koifa Lincoln's not even disabled, so he's absolutely fine. Yeah, he forced to have some self forward, but that is not gonna help him kill the Weaver. No, sir, that does not help. And here comes that Relic Green purchase on Silent, so... My brain tells me that there's no way a Spectre Radiance will outcarry, you know, a farm Weaver, a farm Void, and a farm Razor. But my heart believes. I think it's like a much weaker case of what we saw last game, where there is going to be some oh, bottom top lane. We're going to have a go now. They jump in on Koikfa. They've broken the Lincoln Spirit, but can they follow this one up for a kill? Bat leaps in. He lurches forward, but Koikfa's just too damn fast. He's going to get out. Flame break. Needed to throw it, didn't let it go, and that was his only shot at getting a lasso off. If he could do it before the time lapse came through. I mean, even if they got that kill, it's like, okay, well... Yeah, even then, it's what we were discussing earlier. Oh, you man can just push the bottom lane, speaking of which. He won him, but he backtracks it, now he time walks out, and they haunt to get some vision here. Can they swap in time? No stun available. All of it for naught. Well, haunt's down now, so if your team... Look what, you just go push. Radiance Middle Tower. I feel like we're beating attack. a dead horse. Liquid rising, Lumi. Liquid rising. Empire falling. I was I'm really sad to see them struggling because I, I saw them at Star Ladder and they they were definitely the second best team there. They played better than everyone else, they played better than IG. The only team they couldn't outplay was DK. They outplayed Navi, Alliance, and I looked at them it's like this was their first real LAN as a team that they played a tech labs but that was not against the stiffest competition. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, maybe 
it's Empire's going to be like Liquid, one of those teams that people aren't viewing as a top contender who show up and, and dominate, but it doesn't appear that the mojo is there for Empire. They are a very young team, to be fair. A lot of times, it's also when you get hot. I think Team Liquid is actually a great example of this. They play really well throughout the year, and then like two months before TI, they just like fall apart. And uh, the Team Liquid luck is the karma is coming back, right? Like now they're getting hot, and this is like the best time to get red hot. In order to get hot at the right time, you have to get cold at the right time, and well, <laughs> they think Team Liquid they was, <laughs> and it was tactical. I mean, they, they were, went, they went <laughs> yeah, ta tactical, not get invited, go through the wild card, and just surprise everybody. You know, there's always this interesting debate, and in like, for example, in the NFL, if you, if you follow the sport, where the teams who do super well get a, a bye in the first round of the playoffs, right? And some people argue that's a disadvantage, because it means you come in much colder. You haven't been playing the last week, you've had two or three weeks off, and your players are more well-rested. That's the argument for why it's an advantage. But the other side of things is, there is this thing of, there's uh, this idea of momentum in comp competition of any kind, sports or Dota, and the fatigue is less of a factor in Dota than Pro sports, to be fair, so unless you do best of I, I wouldn't call it an advantage to start in the wild card, but <laughs> hey, man, you win that thing, you're gonna have some confidence, especially this year where there were four teams. So winning it means a bit more than in previous. I, I suppose so. And uh, that momentum got the momentum, Lumi. Come on! And then they beat like three top teams yesterday, so that's like the best kind of momentum walking into day two. Yeah. Team Liquid. I mean, Riding the wave. Radiant's look, when people talk about EG attack. and the hope of NA Dota, Dyer's maybe they're looking at the wrong team, attack. man. It's Narvi and it's Team Liquid. And they're now the smoke. Empire, it's it's fairly uh, desperate as far as it goes. They've shown the Spectre bottom, but everywhere else, the map is dark. And Liquid already are grouping. They do not want to get ambushed. Quick foot into the pit. He's actually... Oh, no. They might get jumped. Oh, Lumi, this could be perfect for Empire. They've been revealed. Okay. Damon jumped in. If they're ever going to win a fight, this has to be... Split, and then a lasso on Demon. No chance to react, but TC BKBs stand strong and turn. He gets swapped two inches away. He's stolen a lot of damage, and well, they got to deal with him somehow, some way. The Weaver's also healthy, and they're going to look to turn this even without their Demon. TC not stunned yet in this fight. Kept alive for the time being. The Bat isolated on the hill, unable to engage, and now it turns. Empire way too far behind, and no Spectre for this one. I'm not even sure if he joined the fight, but he's gone for now. His illusion got the kill, but I don't think he actually haunted no, it. No, she, she never joined the fight, and... Well... I don't know if they would have won the fight with Spectre, but I feel like they were never winning it without him. Yeah, so exactly. So what's the point? Exactly, and you gotta keep in mind, that was the best fight you could have asked for, the best start you could have asked for, because it was a three-man thunderclap into a immediate wipe of Jimmy. Like, Jimmy was not part of that fight, <laughs> apart from eating the nukes, which I guess was a big part of it. But, uh, they only, what, they traded two for one. So, and they're giving up for so that's a, an awful trade. So I, I, I think I think we just saw all of Empire, and it's not enough. We're being carried into the abyss of suffering if we're Empire fans, Lumi. Looked at him at his eyes. Is that is that how it goes? Don't uh, look at me in his, my, my eyes, or is that something? Yeah, something like that. Uh oh, Koi okay. okay. Say okay. goodbye to your Aegis. Can they kill him again? No. I don't think so. No. In no. fact, they gotta get out of there because Koi is gonna kill all of them. They do have a gem, but he he's got some good. Back up is coming. Look into the abyss of suffering, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> what a quote! What a quote! Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, it's uh, well worth the watch, I would say. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not a movie, it's like a, like a commercial, right? It's like a, and it's one of the, the liquid pre-rolls. Yeah, pre-rolls. At G1 go. League, yeah. last, last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are the best. Those are the best. <laughs> The way he delivered it was not exactly what I would call enthusiastic or convincing. <laughs> not getting an Oscar for that one. Yeah, he might he, he might get an international agent, but no Oscars are in his future, I have to say. <laughs> what if he gets into free to play, like part two? Well, Oscar, maybe? He's gonna have to step it up. We'll need some coaching from Valve. Fortunately, Lumi, they can pay for it. <laughs> they earned enough for that. So we've got that going for them, which is great. You know when we're discussing TC's career in Hollywood uh, during a Dota cast, <laughs> not much is going on in the And game. it's only 27 minutes yeah, in, that's the... <laughs> this that is the way. type of thing that will come out also. Oh, silent, we have a swarm, bit of a dive. Deso, like, just hurting him, driving off the wave. That's actually that's pretty really big. bad. When a Weaver can bully a Spectre this hard, yeah, that's a big concern. Yeah, and he can't farm now, right? Like when, when, when he just pushes you out of the way. 
at the movements of Liquid, you've just got way too running all the way up the hill to play they some ultra they want, aggressive right? observer wards. And it wasn't even a good one because they, they, they saw it, they pinged it out. And there's just nothing they can do about it. Well, no, they have a gem, right? They, they'll deward it. Oh, no, they can deward it, but I mean. In terms of map control, like, look at the map for Empire. If they're going out there trying to punish those types of movements, they're doing it entirely dark. They see, they have one lane ward, and outside of that, they basically see this region. So they see virtually nothing, and any movement is incredibly risky. If LGD is watching, and could understand my poor English, I, I, I think uh, what Liquid has been doing game after game after game is pick, like, the ultra safest lane. If you beat them in the lane, they just flat out lose. Mid lane, they're gonna jump in now. They look to go and always want to fly Burrow. We'll find him and say goodbye to your ancient apparition. Yeah, going back to the draft, it, it was like what a void razor and a uh, weaver. Like these are terrific, terrific. No, these are terrible lanes. Excuse me, wrong adjective. Yeah, these are terrible lanes. If you beat them in lanes, liquid does nothing. Okay, so you're completely changing the point that I thought you were making. Yeah, what okay. was I making? I thought you were saying they pick great lanes, and now you're saying they pick terrible lanes. These are terrible lanes, right? I don't think the Ra Razor versus Pan is a good lane. Okay, sure. That's, Weaver that's... versus Bat is pretty like, good. Like, Void off lane is not The Void off lane was not a strong lane, yeah. I agree. And then, and then the Sankey But he was Murana. left alone against the Spectre, which made it a good lane. And then the Sankey Murana, like, did nothing. Like, he got the first blood, which is good. But... I think, I think what I would say is they pick a greedy laning state. Yes. So they pick... Three cores that need to. I think it's more like their mid game, right? Where you've got only Void, who really goes around Crady Lab space. Sand K wants to get some Blake. But I wouldn't say the lanes were weak, it was more just their mid game tempo control was a bit lacking. So. I'm gonna almost completely disagree with you, sorry, Lou. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, I meant what, what you meant. I meant what you said, but I just said it wrong. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so go in now, into the chronosphere comes the HF original, but Demon backtracks it, the guy okay. just can't be touched. Okay, he's, he's getting chase. touched now, he's gonna get touched all over the place. And he's coming, the back and line. he's coming, finds Bag, he's gonna drop to this one low, not dead yet, but here comes the split, grabs the gem, can't make his way out, TC though, looks to clean it up, always wanna fly, will fall, and now he fights the pandas, and he fights silent, and well, does he have enough damage to do it? He hasn't actually stolen all that much, but now it starts to stack up. He's stealing from the wind panda of all <laughs> things. Not sure if that should be possible either, but so it is, Lumi. So it is. Did a Jimmy die in that fight? Did he buy Yes, back? yes, he died to start the fight. I didn't I didn't see the buyback counter. Oh no, maybe he didn't. He did a buyback, yeah. I don't know, they they tried to go on him, but they couldn't kill him, because then the epicenter came in and he jumped away. I see. And they passed the gem back to him now. It's the ba he backtracked the itch apparition ult damage. Like, you knew the fight was already gonna be hard when that happened. It looked okay, because that Chrono really didn't do much. And then, uh, and then they were focusing him so hard, but... Radiance bottom enough. Down. And here comes uh, the They've got a Chrono again, and there's no Panda split. This All is right. not good. Oh no, the Chrono cancels! He wants the tower, but it's glyphed! Jimmy, what are you doing? Demon leaps away. Oh, Koikpa's gonna pay. He traps his Weaver in, and well... He at least makes his own way out. Okay, that was a classic Jimmy moment. So he chronos his teammate <laughs> under Firefly, so Koifa is just like, well, I'm dying. Hits a glyph power, gets his weaver killed, and then runs away because he, he, he doesn't die. I would love to be a fly on the wall in the liquid war room right now. Oh my god, Demon, please. Demon, please. They actually do stun Silent here, but he's safely made it down to the low ground. Despite all that, Lumi, they are leading by 20,000 gold and 20,000 experience. I, I do like the whole, uh, I, I do like the complete call out, LD. I appreciate that. Keeping what? your co caster honest. <laughs> no, like, seriously. That's okay, I know you'll do the same to me. No, no, not enough casters do that. Like, a lot of casters are like, eh, go along. No, you, you gotta call it out, man. Yeah. You're all, you're all about the flame. Yeah, like, flaming your flaming man. casters is the best. The, the real talk. That's yeah. that's that's the stuff. Yeah, people don't get mad if you flame your co-caster. Well, not as bad as they get if you flame a player. They'll make their go on demon bottom lane now. They've got a stun. They do chain it up completely with the lasso though, which prompts a BKB and an easy retreat. All right, not bad, not bad. Don't know if they would have had Cadam anyway, but definitely not with that stun stack. I mean, Empire's playing with fire, right? Every time you go on demon like that, first of all, he's probably not gonna die. And he's probably not gonna die before dropping that Chronosphere. You don't know where the rest of Liquid is. So, it's fairly dangerous. And I think 
in that Roshan teamfight, they were able to kill Pegasus before he dropped his Chrono. I think that's not going to happen anymore. But the fact that he's picked up a BKB and Aghanim Scepter, he has enough raw HP with Backtrack to withstand that burst and just drop the Chrono. And as soon as you drop the Chrono, they lose. Meanwhile, Boba on the top one here gets clapped and Resolution is spending. Well, he just does split for a Marana, but can't even isolate no, Marana. No, they even find a Marana. Now he's kind of trapped here, a little bit of awkward position. Meanwhile, Bro Strike's gonna cancel, keep him, always wanna fly. He's gonna die on the back line here. Boba still on the run. Boba might not even die next to that mech. The Hadouken's gonna come in, aiding a little bit. Of Don't kill the Earth Panda. Don't kill the Earth Panda. Nice blink out. Um, no, they chase him through. The arrow connects. Beautifully lined up by Boba, even before the Burrow came through. And then Resolution. They run him down. They might okay, have the Chrono okay. for this one, and they will. Aww. Well that, done by Demon. And he close. keeps on racing forward. He's got a time walk in five, but I think Mag will blink out in time. He's already got it. Is this Navi or is this Liquid? I don't know, man. <laughs> Liquid is playing exactly a Navi. Just clutch. Nothing but clutch. Here comes the bottom team fight here. Koifa going on the van score. Blink Burrow shred. Look at that Burrow! Burrow! Silent has the DD, but he's straight running. He's out of mana at this point, and oh my god, Koifa is gonna run him down. Blink Burrow shred coming off cooldown in two seconds. Jimmy's joining the fight, and Jimmy, well, he doesn't get the kill, but he does add a, a salty bash at the end of that fight. Koifa's getting pretty big now. He's got the BKB complete. BKB Lincolns, and now next we'll be looking at the next damage item, and that's the point where you can't lasso him because you have no way to break his Lincoln Sphere except swap, I suppose. And I eh, maybe with a level two swap they use that. Then they can go through him with the lasso, but even then, if he's got a BKB off, where's their physical damage? The Spectre actually is a largely magical damage, even at this stage. So Lumi, I think this is about time to begin the siege. Liquid come in, they'll start at least try to force a Spectre buyback, though little do they know there actually isn't one, but they're content with their damage, and, and we'll just continue farming and taking it late. Yeah. Team Liquid is in no rush, man. They're milking the camera time. Enjoying this good win. I mean, I'm calling a win, but I guess anything could happen in Dota. This would be the biggest comeback of the event. Well, it would be a 20,000 gold comeback. Not just that, but looking at the drafts as well. I, I think the biggest thing that would help them come back is an Aghanim Scepter on the Ancient Apparition, to be totally honest. And more items on the Spectre as well, but... The AX are just not there, and well, here comes your haunt. There's gonna be... no. N jump in. And Spectre just kind of getting some scouting information, in yeah, fact. Scouter. Tried to finish off the Razor, but... Well, Ancient Apparition Ice Blast coming through! Is this gonna find anybody? They right over the top, it's it too up. far into the well. It's Might not gonna Jimmy. connect. Probably kill Jimmy, yeah. It's not an axe. Yeah, if it hit him. Yeah. But the debuff wouldn't last long enough. I mean, actually, if you look at how much damage that one haunt did to, like, Boba and Jimmy, I guess hope is not lost, right? If Because you combine that A Ice Blast, like you said, with the axe up there on top with that haunt, you get a couple of kills. So I guess, in a sense, they always have a shot of winning fights. But it's just so hard to hit multiple people with that Ice Blast and, and you know, pray that your haunt does enough. No, now they go into the Roche pit here. TC and Koikfa will start to work on it. They know Haunt's on cooldown. How do you contest this without Haunt? You don't. You Ice Blast it, I guess. Drive him back, man. Spectre does have the heart finish. That's like the only thing that removes the, the damage from the Ice Blast, really, is time lapse. Nothing else works to restore your HP during it. Yeah. I guess, mechanically, it just takes you back in time before you even have that buff. Upside. But it doesn't actually remove the debuff. Oh, it just removes the damage. Yeah. So... Like, your HP goes up. Yeah. It's but very interesting. It, it does it in a way that it doesn't gain you HP. It's just like, it takes you to your previous HP amount. It's not really a heal, I guess, yeah. is the way to describe it. Yeah, that's true. Still interesting, I, I feel. But here mag. we go. They're gonna find Mag. Well, or he's got they? a gem. They have a gem. He sees everything. It's on Demon. Demon's got one, but so too does Mag, and Koikfa is way out, but he's got BKB, Lincoln, and Aegis. I don't think they can kill him that many times, Lumi. If Jimmy Kronos, then maybe. Oh no, the Weaver, I'm saying. Yeah, if Jimmy Kronos, the Weaver. Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, that took me a second. It's not, that's not normally how your brain works when you're dead. <laughs> it happens, you know, it happened. Uh, well, it's not happening for now. I would almost say a bullet dodged by Liquid, considering that was like the best opening Empire ever could have, except they're just too far behind to make it work for them.
Hmm. I'm, I'm at a loss. If if I'm writing a story tale right now, and how Empire is going to make that terrific comeback, I don't know where to begin. I think it begins with an Axe on the HF Russian and just six slots on Spectre. <laughs> like, that's that's where I'm starting. By which point, Void and... Oh, oh here we go. Lasso near the Ancients finds way to... And now they jump him, he pops his BKP, they're not even killing off the Sand King, and suddenly a solo Chrono just for Mag, but an easy kill secured by Demon. Who, by the way, is going for pressure. They're getting even more lockdown for this one. They just lost a gem for that move as well, because Batrider just died, and Sand King picks it up. Yeah, BKB is a great item choice in this game. Not only does it block the, uh, the Radiance Burn damage, the Desolate damage is also pure damage, so BKB blocks through that as well. Helps yeah, he helps against ice blasts, etc., etc. BKB is really strong this game in general, and that's you know again what I was saying. The Spectre just doesn't have much right click yet. He's got a Vanguard which gives him no damage, a Heart which gives him no damage, and a Radiance, the burn damage of which is magical. He's they need right, they need actual right click damage on him if they're gonna take this late as well. But or they have to just wait out the BKB. Spectre is one of those carries that don't essentially. You don't normally build damage. Yeah, exactly. She, she doesn't kill you through right clicks. So I don't think she'll ever get enough right click damage. The other the one other thing is if it goes that late, BKB timers do tend to go down. That's right? At which point maybe you can just kind of wait things out and then go. If Liquid is even using but, those BKBs. But Liquid's not thinking it's going to go that late. They're breaking high ground now in the bottom lane. Oh, Static Storm. Or sorry, Iron of the Storm is uh, fairly good at breaking high grounds. Arrow coming in, not going to hit on anything, but the Deso plus Eye of Storm is just tearing this tower apart. And they're just playing it really safe. They're going to wait out the next level. Are they waiting for the next Eye of Storm? No, they're waiting for the Refresher. They're right going now. back in. They're giving them the old loop Loo. They just got the Refresher. The Moonlight Shadow popped and there's a gem on Mag, so it looks like they just purchased a new one. This is not going to work, at least in terms of the element of surprise, but... Yeah, I think they're just waiting for double Eye of the Storm, which is going to come in 23 seconds. It really Dyer's doesn't have a long cooldown. Is under attack. And the fact that it lasts such, such a long time on your hero. Yeah. What a spell. With this, Razor becomes... I think he will do even attack. more damage than the Weaver in these fights. But, you know, your thought process is... Who do I kill if you're Empire? Who do you go on, and how do you kill them second? They almost have double Chrono as well. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. They can't kill anybody except the Void, because if they try to kill anybody else, Void Chronos just stops that. So, and but, even if they kill, if even if they go on the Void, the Burrow Strike can counter it, counter it. Yeah. They don't have enough damage to kill the Void. That's the second, you know, bad news. A Here demon jumps in now. He's gonna Chrono. He connects on to Bound Silent in range for quick, but it does work. Now they Epi through as well. They melt down the Venju, swapped him out for safety for the time being, but he will die anyway. Buys back. So haunt in. Can he do it? So the specter of the damage for now, he can't even tickle him. It's only way to with his BKB ward off. He brings them low with the with the dispersion, but not low enough. That was right as the BKBs ended. I was watching TC's HP the entire time, never dropped below 75%, and his Eye of Storm just the minus armor of those strikes. They strike so very quickly. And they're all dead. Great initiation by Demon attack. there. Yeah. Just uh, I think the key is just don't hesitate, wait for the five man you get to, just go. Yeah. And he caught them in such a way that Quakefoot could auto tech through and, and Empire tap out. They just they couldn't deal with Liquid. When you're just ahead, you just need a Chrono like one. But he got two. As long as you don't Chrono teammate, you're good. Well, that game was not exactly the showing that Team Empire was looking for. But LGD, sorry, Team Liquid continue to improve the record. And they're actually going up against LGD next. And I think LGD should give them a better challenge. Given the fact that they had for a Liquid. Great, yeah, for I Liquid. agree. Yeah. I actually, despite how the records look right now, I think LGD is 